Thank you for joining in on today's block build up. You'll quickly learn to draw and design in 3D by following these easy and fun steps. I'm Glenny D. Did you know there are only five 3D shapes to draw and engineer anything? Quick look back at lesson one where we drew a rectangular prism. Today we're practicing drawing a cylinder. A round brick is a cylinder and on top is an even smaller cylinder called a stud. The stud is what allows it to click and build onto other bricks. See below for the link for this printable PDF or you can follow along on blank paper. You can draw freehand or you could use the Splat 3D tool. First, let's get a feel for drawing an ellipse by tracing over this drawing. Practice drawing in the air. I'm running the pencil around and around just above the paper. Then draw one ellipse. The next one out is slightly bigger. So again, practice drawing the shape and when you're confident, bring your pencil down and draw one ellipse. Then drop some lines down five millimeters and half an ellipse to finish off the stud. Cool. Now trace the larger ellipse and note that the axis of symmetry is around about that height. Now we'll judge how long we want the cylinder. We start off by drawing another axis, axis of symmetry, join it to the other cylinder with some lines and then half an ellipse. Now let's see how that looks using the splat tool. First, the small ellipse. Notice I'm drawing in the axis of symmetry. There's two in every ellipse. That's going to help me line up the splat tool. So those two marks go on the axis and draw in the small ellipse. Great. Now for the slightly larger one. First, mark off how wide you want your ellipse. We're going to copy the shape of the small one, only a little bit bigger. Start off with some light sketchy lines, then draw in your ellipse. Take a look at a second axis of symmetry five millimeters further down. That's it there. So you're going to want to drop the sides of your cylinder down to touch that line and finish off with a half ellipse. And that is your stud complete. Now it's time to draw the larger ellipse. We'll use the splat for that, but where is the center? It's on exactly the same um, axis of symmetry. So line up the big ellipse and draw in almost all of the whole ellipse. Some of it's hidden behind the stud. Finish up with a half ellipse on the very bottom axis. Join those two ellipses together with a line and we've drawn our first round Lego brick. Now you're ready to draw this brick with no help. Start by drawing a vertical or straight up and down line. Then pick anywhere on the line and draw an axis across. Measure five millimeters down to a point and draw your second axis. Then measure another 30 millimeters and draw a third axis. We're ready to start. Remember we used the small ellipse centered on that first axis. Draw the whole ellipse. Then we used um, a slightly larger ellipse. We're going to measure 10 millimeters to the right and 10 to the left. That's how wide we want our next ellipse. It probably should just about touch the second um, axis down. So lightly draw it in. And when you've got your hand moving, Press a little harder and draw in the full ellipse. Awesome! Next is drop down a line, five millimeters, so it should touch that second line. And then make a copy of that half ellipse, starting there and finishing on the other side. Great. On the second axis down is where we'll line up a large ellipse. So center it and draw in almost all the full ellipse. Great. Now on the third axis, center the large ellipse again, but just draw half an ellipse. And to finish off, we connect the two ellipses together with a straight line, and you have done a fantastic job. Let's have some fun rendering our Lego brick. 
Notice how there's an area on the left hand side that's a little brighter than the right hand side. That's called my highlight. How we represent that is to leave this area white paper. That's called the highlight. So let's go over to the right hand side and with a sharp pencil draw lines that are really close together and then slowly get further apart. So that's called my long fade towards the highlight. On the other side we begin with lines that are close together as well but it's a much shorter fade. I have to get the lines more quickly spaced apart. Okay, can you see the highlight that I've left there? Great. Uh, we're going to do the same thing, leave a highlight in about the same position. But on the stud, the um, fade will be a bit shorter on both sides. This is a hollow stud, an open stud. So the highlight doesn't go straight above, as you'd think. It actually goes if I drew a line through the center, diagonally across, that's where the highlight will be. So my long fade is now on the left, and my short fade is on the right. Can you see how that effect is occurring here in the picture? Now I'm using colored pencil to render that curved surface. Begin by planning H, or where your highlight is. Then start with your darkest pencil furthest away from your highlight. Work your fade towards the highlight, and if it gets, uh, if it runs out, becomes too light, go all the way back to the dark, darken that up, and work all the way through your fade, taking it a little bit closer towards the highlight. I'm using several runs along the cylinder there. It takes a bit of practice to make it look even. Now on the top, that's my long fade. Let's go over to the other side. Here I'm darkening up the edge, and it's my short fade, so I really, really quickly have to release the pressure so that I don't cover my highlight with blue pencil. There's another short fade. Do you remember what we do on the top? From the highlight, go diagonally to the inside where the hole is, and my highlight will be on the other side, which means I'm swapping the short and long fades. So that's a short fade. Using a sharp pencil in your splat or any ellipse guide, you can go around the ellipses and just tidy up the edges of them. Extra dark on the bottom where it could be a little bit of shadow. Sometimes we call that a cutting line, the dark blue line that goes all the way around the object. For teachers, the splats are available much cheaper in class sets. See the link below. Thanks to everyone today for joining in and practicing your drawing, design and STEM skills. I'm Glennie D and I'll see you next tutorial where we combine cylinders and prisms to solve some cool engineering problems. See you then.